And the first thing you're going to want to do is whenever you're building an app, you have to get the application requirements or the business requirements for the app. In this case, we're going to build an app uh, for you know, a fake company where, where they need to manage employees. So the, this app that we're going to build is going to have to be able to store like first name, last name, you can see that here, age, phone number, email, hire date, termination date, these are all like standard employee uh, attributes. Um, so we're going to have to create a database table with these, uh, these columns uh, so we can store this data. So um, each employee must also have a unique employee number. Uh, the app should let you add or edit employees but not delete employees. Um, if an employee is added, uh, we, we'll figure that out. There's, there should be an active, inactive, and uh, an active or inactive status instead of actually delete. Usually when you have a database table, um, you don't really want to let people delete data. That's like kind of like bad practice. You know, because then you you don't know what was was there previously, right? If you for auditing purposes and stuff like that, you really shouldn't be deleting data. So um, it's, it's standard practice to just do an active or, or an inactive status for each for a record. Um, so once we're able to get into the database, um, the first thing is going to be we're going to create a database, right? After we create the database on the SQL Server Express instance. You're gonna connect the SQL Server Express instance, then create a database, and then create your tables. Your tables is where you're gonna save your, your, your employee information. We're gonna create one called employees, and it's gonna have these, these fields as part of it. So now, um, let's create the database and the tables, and to do that, we have to launch SQL Server Management Studio, or SSMS for short, short for that. And I have it pinned on my taskbar, so I'm just going to click it. You might have to go to your start menu and open it from there <clears throat> if you haven't already. We already did a test, so you probably already have it open. But in case you don't, once you launch it, you want to type dot backslash SQL Express in the server name. And then authentication type, you want to have Windows authentication, and then click connect. And voila, we have a connection to a SQL database. So. To <clears throat> so to start, um, we're gonna create a fresh new database, and you're gonna so you're gonna want to expand the instance, the SQL Express instance. Right click the databases folder and then click New Database, and then for database name, I'm just gonna call it uh, Nuno Solutions for now. Nice and simple. You can name it whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, it will be important later though when you start building the client side application. You're gonna have to know what the name is. So keep in mind of what it is. So we're gonna open it up, expand it, and expand tables. Right now we don't have any tables in there. And so to create a table, you're gonna right click the tables folder, click new table. And this is where you start defining the, the employees table that we're gonna create. So I'm gonna, this is how you do it from the designer. You could absolutely create this table using a create table statement. You can look that up, on, Google it and look at it up and if you want to do it that way. But I'm going to use it this way because it's a lot easier to show a new person coming into databases and programming. It's a lot easier to just use a designer. So um, we're going to go look at the, the employee t employees table we're going to create has to have an emp ID. So I'm going to give it the name emp ID and then the data type here. You could click this and look at the different data types, right? This is the data type drop down. I'm going to select an integer because it's going to be a number. An, an employee ID is an, is a, an employee number, right? And I'm going to raise this little um, bottom portion here. And we're going to exp expand this identity specification. And we're going to, on this is identity, we're going to change this to yes. And you'll notice that now you have an identity increment and identity seed. So like identity increment is, is whenever a new record's created, this is a, this column, this field is going to automatically increment um, starting with one. The next record that it's created is going to be two. It's incremented by one. The identity seed is the starting number. So if I change this to ten, it would start at, at ten. Just leave that as one for now. And you also notice that this allow column, allow nulls, is now unchecked because identity columns cannot be null. The next column is first name, and this is going to be a var char. 40, 40 meaning, so that what this really means, bar char 40, alphanumeric characters, and it, it could be a maximum of 40 characters. We're going to uncheck allow nulls. Nulls really means, does this field have to have a value or not? If it's checked, 
allow nulls, that means you don't have to set, like for first name, we need first name, it has to be populated. So we're gonna say allow nulls, we're gonna uncheck it. So last name, and this will be a bar chart 50. We want a last name. So we also are gonna need a created date. I'll put the dates all at the end, so they're all together. So we need an age, an email, and a phone. So let's do, do this a little quicker. Age, email, and phone. And we'll leave that one blank. I mean, nullable. And now we have created date. I'm gonna set this to date time too more compatible with .NET date times. Um, hire date, because just because you added the employee in here doesn't mean they're hired yet. Um, and then, so created date is gonna have to be not null. The other thing I like to do with created date, um, in this bottom portion here in the general section, there's a um, default value and binding field here. I like, I, like you could make this, uh, you know, set an expression here or value, a default value. So I'm going to just use a function called get date, like that. And what that'll do is whenever a record's created, a new record, this field will automatically get populated with the current date and time. So, and then here we're going to add termination date. And of course, higher date and termination date are nullable. They, 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 they don't have to have a value because you don't know when they're going to actually get hired or if they're ever, ever going to be terminated, right? And let me see. Uh, I'm also going to add a field here called an employment status. This technically should be a, a character one, a char one. And usually employment in this kind of field would, would relate to another table where it would be an employee statuses table where you can define what the employee's employment statuses can be. Like that, basically, it's like a list of values that are valid for this field. But for the sake of this teaching, I'm just going to add a field here and we're going to just set it to bar chart 50 for now. And we'll um, use active, inactive. That's pretty much the only values that this is going to have. I'm going to set this to nullable because until the, the hired, they get hired, right? Um, they're not really employed yet. So employment status will become active when the hire date is set. And then inactive when termination date is, is uh, populated. Or if they're not terminated, they leave on their own, we'll just set the employee status to inactive. And if termination date is null, that means that they just left on their own. So we're gonna go ahead and we can hit save. But before we do that, if you hit F4, this property window will come up and you could actually set a name for your table here. But if you hit save, right, I mean, you could change it right here, you see what I mean? If you hit the save button, it'll prompt you. You gotta, you gotta click on this area here, make sure this is highlighted, hit save. It'll prompt you to put a table name. We're gonna call this employees. Click okay. And now if you go over here, you, you don't see the table yet. So what you gotta do is right click tables and hit refresh. And now you have your employees table. And if you expand that, and then in this, folder list, you expand columns, you'll see the columns that you created. Now there's one very important thing that I forgot to do here. So every table should have a primary key. It's like a usually a unique identifier that identifies each record uniquely. And so our unique identifier is going to be the employee ID. So to do that through the designer, all you have to do is select the column you want to make the unique primary key. And you hit this little set primary key button. And then you'll see this little key appear here on the, the header column, on the row header. And then you just hit save. And it will automatically it propagate, propagate to the, the table. table. If you right-click the columns and you hit refresh, you'll, you'll see a little key here next to employee ID. So you know that's actually a um, primary key. So, so through SQL Management Studio, you can actually edit these records if you want by right-clicking and just doing like edit top to 100. <coughs> And, and believe it or not, you can actually add records right, right in here. So you'll notice here that the employee ID is like grayed out. That's because you can't set the employee ID. It's an auto-incremented identity, if you remember. So the best number, whenever you save the record, is automatically going to be populated. So we're going to create Nuno Ferreira 40. And we're going to set um, my email here. 
phone number, I believe, is nullable, right? Nullable. So we're not going to set it. You see how it's null here? And or not, and create a date has an auto populated field. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just literally just going to click off this row, click on the bottom row here, and it will save the record. Okay, so you know now it looks like it's gray, right? That's because I have to refresh this. So you can actually refresh this by right-clicking somewhere in this white area here and executing execute SQL. What this is really executing, just so you know, it's a little confusing. Execute SQL. If you click the SQL button up here, it'll show you it's actually executing this SQL statement. What this is saying is, give me the top 200 uh, uh, records from the employees table. Obviously, there's not 200. There's only one record that I've added. So uh, when I right click and I do execute SQL or press Control R on the keyboard, right? It now refreshes. Let me hide this uh, top panel here. And now you'll see here you have a record saved, and you'll see, you'll notice that the created date got automatically populated because we set a default value for that field, and also the employee ID get, got automatically populated to one. So now if you add another record, let's add another person here, my brother. And I don't. I'm just gonna say user one at company. I don't know. I'm not gonna put his real email here, of course. And I'm gonna literally get off this record to save it. So now, if I press right-click and do execute SQL, you'll see now my employee ID is one. My brother's employee ID is two. Right. So now we have two employees, two separate employees in this employees table. Right. Hope this makes sense. So now that we have a database to work with, uh, we can now start building the front end, which will be a Blazor application.